Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 348 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube. As always, thank you very much for tuning in, whether you are watching live or you're watching the recording. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. And if you do uh, subscribe, not describe, you may want to click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos coming your way. Our first comment in this live goes to Dev, who says, hello, P. Hello to you as well, Dev. Uh, the plan for today is that we're going to be doing one of our sort of longer format videos today, looking at a few different scents all in one video rather than breaking them up into separate videos. You know how we like to um, keep keep things as mixed up as possible here on this channel. Comments coming through now. Polpo is here as well saying hello. Andre says hello, Persiles. Fahmi says hello, sir. Happy to see you live again. And the better third is watching from Mississippi. Please keep the comments and questions coming. Uh, Lady Whistle Downs Paper says, Bonjour, darling Mr. P. Thank you very much indeed for that. And Wattleby Project says, Yay, I made my first live. You're very, very welcome. And another tiny little bit of housekeeping, I should say as well, but do keep the comments coming, is that if you would like to find out how you can support my work, you should be able to find a link to my coffee page in the video description below. Okay, lots of things to smell today because I would like to get through every single bottle that you see here. And Dev says, like the stream, guys. Yes, yes, it is really, really helpful if you're enjoying the video. If you do actually click on the thumbs up, um, that, that that is extremely helpful and much appreciated. I think we should start with a brand new release. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it is brand new. I think it's I think it is already out, but I think it it hasn't been out for terribly long. And it's from Armani Privé. We haven't talked about Armani Privé here for quite a while. I've been a little bit um out of the loop as far as new releases from from this particular range of Armani is concerned. Um I think it must be coming up to 2 years ago now if not longer, that I did a sort of Armani Privé showcase. And I gather they released a couple of scents last year. I'm pretty sure I didn't get a chance to try them. But this is new. This is from their slightly more affordable, lighter <clears throat> O range, uh, as in French for water. Uh, and these are all EDTs. They're all eau de toilettes. And this one is called Santal Dansha. I have no idea if that is how you're meant to pronounce it. Um, and I'm always in excited about trying new perfumes anyway, as you know. Oh, the better third. Thank you very much. That's very, very kind. Much appreciated. With What's that gift saying? Oh, incredible. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope. Um, Dev says, a bit scared of the Armani Privé range. The one I'm most curious about is Vetiver Diver and nothing more, really. And if I have ever tried that one... It slipped my mind. I can't remember. But I was saying I'm particularly excited about this one because uh, it is reportedly by Fabrice Pellegrin, uh, who, who seems to be having a little bit of a moment on this channel. Um, because I think in one of the most recent videos, we had two creations by him. There's a deep teak from him coming your way as well soon, which we're not allowed to talk about yet. But I have had an initial sniff, and I think it's going to be a pretty good one. Uh, Bois d'Anson from Armani Privé is my all-time favourite perfume, says Lotta. Yeah, that is a pretty good one. There are some good ones in the Armani Privé range, and it seems to just, just sort of slip outside of our perception a little bit. Unfairly so. Anyway, let us do the unwrapping, and I will try to keep it away from the microphone. So this is a genuine, is it going to be love at first scent moment. Oh, Dev says, I'm currently reading through the perfume guide, Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez's perfume guide. Very interesting read. Yes, it's, 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 it's a really, really good book. Okay, here we go. So Santal Dan Shah. If anybody could perhaps shed some light on what the Dan Shah reference is, I have got a little bit of a tiny, teeny, weeny press release thing to go with it, but I don't think it explains what Dan Shah is. I'm, I'm assuming it's a place. Right, what's the best way of doing this? Let's get this out. Very, very attractive packaging, as you can imagine. I do like the Armani Privé bottles. I am guessing this is an artificial colour. It looks a little bit too, well, too pretty, I suppose, to, to be real. Is there colouring listed on the in ingredients? Oh, gosh. Somebody's going to have to start wearing reading glasses soon. Um, I know, that's just their address. Oh, here we go. 
Yes, there are colours. There's a yellow, there's a violet, there's a red. Anyway, it doesn't, doesn't matter, I suppose. Um, right. So, let's get a blotter and let's see what Monsieur Pellegrin has done for Armani. Um, Gunnar says, have you ever done a top 10 of one perfumer? No, I haven't. And that's an idea that people keep mentioning. And I think it's a superb idea, actually. So thank you for reminding me. But I, I just, yes, I sort of need to sort out in my head how I would actually go about doing it and whether it would be a case of doing a top 10 of all of the scents they've ever made or ones, you know, not taking into account discontinued ones or not taking into account discontinued ones, etc. Anyway, this is Monsieur Pellegrin. I would imagine it's going to be some sort of form of sandalwood, but a sandalwood eau de toilette is interesting. Okay, here we go. You're all watching the forehead, right? <laughs> Have any of you smelt this yet? I think I caught sight of one comment. Oh, Caroline says, this Armani Privé reminded me quite a lot of Lancôme's Santal cardamom, especially in the opening. Okay, um, I haven't smelt that one, but it's interesting that you are name checking cardamom. Because the first thing that came to my mind, not that it's a bad comparison at all, because I love the scent, is, you may have guessed it, Le Labo Santal 33. Um, so, what we are getting here is actually something quite quite sort of deep smelling and, and, and serious and heavy smelling for an EDT. I mean, you, you know, you, you can have EDTs obviously that smell very, very assertive and in your face, but I suppose nowadays we tend to associate a scent profile like that with an EDP. Um, quite mineralic, quite flinty, quite black. Um, oh, Chang says, I tried it last week. It was quite light. I could not smell it 30 minutes later. Gosh, so even though it starts like this, it disappears, you reckon. Um, and a very, very definite, cool, spicy opening. And then the kind of note that a lot of perfume brands keep trying to convince us is sandalwood, but is more a, a kind of fantasy sandalwood, I think, rather than being a real sandalwood. And what do I mean? I'm pretty sure I talked about something like this a while ago. I think it would have been in relation to Tom Ford Santal Blush <clears throat> by uh, Jan Vanier, I believe. So if you've, if you've ever smelt a real sandalwood oil, and if you haven't, do try to find some, you will find that even though it has depth, even though it has presence, even though it is very, very beautiful, it isn't actually all that smoky or sooty or fiery. It tends much more towards um, milky notes, creamy notes, um, which also still somehow to somehow manage to be woody. That, that, that's what gives it a very, very intriguing quality. If you, if you want a perfume out there that captures this quite well, then perhaps I would suggest uh, the Hermès Sans Santal Massoya by Jean-Claude Elena, which, which really captures the, the, the authentic personality of, of sandalwood extremely well. Um, now, having said that, I don't have a problem with fantastical, if you like, in inverted commas, fictional interpretations of notes. You know, we, we, do, we don't always have to stick to photorealism in perfumery, right? And there, there have been quite a few so-called sandalwood perfumes we've had over the years that seem to take this idea of making sandalwood or something sandalwood-like, making it smoky, rougher around the edges, darker, uh, more kind of carbon-like, charcoal-like, if you get what I mean, and perhaps the most famous expression of that sort of a sandalwood idea is Le Labo Santal 33, or maybe uh, Tom Ford Santal Blush. Somewhere in between, I guess, you've got Lorenzo Villaresi's Sandalo, which kind of seems to do both things. And this is, this is veering towards the darker sandalwoods. And I noticed that somebody, we are sentient, says Dreamwood. 
And Dreamwood is a Ferminish, because Fabris Pellegrine's for a Ferminish, isn't he? Dreamwood is a is a synthetic sandalwood, one of many. I can think now as well of ones like Javanol and Ebonol, which really seem to make sandalwood larger and more room filling. Um, and and this is what this is doing now. I have to say personally, at least at first sniff, I find it very very attractive. It, it it's definitely the sort of thing that I would consider wearing, because I like the contrast with the sort of cool cardamomy spiciness at the top, and then maybe something like cedar acting as a bridge in between. But it it it's not genuinely sandalwood okay so I, I guess that's the caveat that we need to to go with shan says tuning in from sri lanka you're very very welcome i hope i'm not too late got married under the sandalwood tree my husband and i fell in love under i suppose fell in, oh yeah interesting prepositions there wore samsara on the day what an amazing story thank you very much and samsara thank you for mentioning samsara because of course when garland samsara first came out so the story goes that it contained a lot of very, very natural sandalwood, whereas, of course, over the years, the supply of that became more and more scarce. The costs went up, and now Samsara contains a lot of synthetic sandalwoods. Uh, Time to Muscup says, very creamy. My saw feels, as in my saw sandalwood, feels like sawdust is sitting marinating in milk. Now, that is a superb description, and I'm going to steal that, if you don't mind, because, yes, absolutely, it's got that beautifully white sense of woodiness, doesn't it? And something that's very, very, very gentle, very, very delicate, and yet is possessed of such profound depths, isn't it? It's one of the most meditative ingredients out there. Um, and Shan says, yes, type that in a rush. Please don't worry. Thank you very much for watching anyway. Um, now, th but this is this is this is ten this is so far on the correct side, on the right side of of roughness. And I wouldn't expect anything less from 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 Fabrice Pellegrin. Let's just label the blotter and let us see what um the little press postcard says. Armani Privé introduces Santal Dan Shah, the latest addition to Les Eaux. Uh, it is inspired by the aromatic woody trees and the fresh, serene lakes of East Asia. The fragrance conjures, conjures a refreshing yet gentle summertime breeze at dusk. Okay, refreshing yet gentle summer. Okay, fine, I wasn't getting that. A harmonious scent evoked by the fragrance's sandalwood notes. Santal Danshar's woody yet refreshing scent blends the balmy sensuality of sandalwood with the sparkling freshness of bergamot and the aromatic spices of cardamom. Sandalwood's transporting effect evokes a sense of immersion in nature, nodding to the abundance of lush landscapes and Sandalwood's rich red hue. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Also echoes the magnificent facades of the imperial palaces. And it goes on to say that at least in the UK, it is available at Selfridges and comes in the 100 ml bottle. So um, it, it's a kind of cooler, and I mean that temperature-wise, not, you know, hipster-wise, it's a cooler version of Santal 33 because of that more prominent um, cardamom note. But but no, thumbs up, absolutely thumbs up to start with. Christine says, my daughter gave me a sandalwood fan when she came back from India. The smell was so beautiful, it melted me to tears. I'm not surprised. I'm not, you know, really, really genuine sandalwood if you smell it, it's, it's, it's just something else. It's, it's absolutely heavenly. Okay, let's leave that there for a sec. Um, and, oh, let's get one more sandalwood comment before we move on. Ashfaq says, good sandalwood oil, essential oil, is mostly boring. However, if one wants a full-bodied sandalwood experience, they should try a CO2 extract, which has lots of similarities of heating up sandal crumbs at low temperature. And we are sentient says, okay, if this smells like Santal 33, does it smell like pickles too? Now, it's interesting that because I remember an ex colleague at work thinking not that it smelt like pickles, but to her it smelt like dill. And she's from Eastern Europe. I have an Eastern European connection. 
And of course, when you think of dill pickles, when you think of pickled cucumbers or cucumbers in brine, one of the main ingredients that one of the key ingredients that used is used in the brining process is is dill. You know, you, you stick your brine and your, your garlic and whatever in there and also lots and lots of dill. So it's interesting you say um, pickles because I've also always thought of Santal 33 having a kind of dill steamed rice type thing but then that's because dill and steamed rice come together in in persian cooking etc 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 we need to move on i i don't think it smells of pickles i don't think it does i, th I think it's one that i'm definitely going to do a proper test drive of okay let's move on to piguet two kind of new releases from piguet one uh brand new and one a reissue of an original one. I'm, I'm pretty sure that this one here, Zazen, is brand new. I don't, I don't think there was an old Piguet called uh, Zazen, uh, but I could, be, I could be wrong. Um, let us just have a very, very quick look. Yeah, there, there isn't, there isn't an old one that comes up anywhere. Uh, so, should we? Let's start with a brand new one. Let's start with a brand new one. What are people saying? Rebecca says, I love Bondi from Piguet, the old and the new. So here we go from Piguet, Zazen. Um, you may remember that Bailey Leeds of Piguet very kindly gave up her time to do an interview on this channel a, a, a little while ago. We should have her back, actually, if, if, she, if she's got the time or the inclination to come back. I don't know who the perfumer for this is. I have a little bit of. Um, press info, but I don't think that tells us who it is. JJ says, I'm curious about Zazen. I already have the new cravash, and I find it quite lovely. Aha, uh -huh, good to know. Okay, so I, I don't even know what to expect from this one. This is, this is, this feels like, you know, doing sort of old school episode of Love at First Scent, because with a lot of these, I genuinely don't know what to expect. Um, right, so Zazen from Robert Piguet. Here we go, spraying now. Try not to spray. Oh God, did I actually get on there? Try not to spray on the tech. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> Little bit lost for words. I wasn't expecting that. It's like I've, it's like I've just bitten into a superb, cucumber sandwich. <laughs> um, but made with like, this is very strange, made with like really white bread, but really, really good white bread, and a good butter, and just some salt, very, very thinly sliced salted cucumber. How bizarre. <laughs> okay, so um, does it smell like a yoga class, says Shan? Um, no, unless you tend to, you know, indulge in eating cucumber sandwiches in your yoga classes. Right, right, right. Okay, let's let's just focus, because I was not expecting that. That that kind of initial note has moved on anyway. But it's it's sort of bracing, refreshing, fresh, without being overly obviously citrusy at all. And and and, and cucumber immediately makes you think of kind of aqueous notes, but it doesn't have that marine calone feel either. It's it's gentle, green, aquatic, um, maybe veering towards slightly saline, maybe almost like freesia type note. Um, Rebecca says, I'm now off to make a cucumber sandwich with vinegar. Ooh, that's, that's good as well. And you know, you wonder what? There's something quite acidic and almost glue-like about this as well. The, the one thing that I like about some of the, the, the newer Piguets is that a lot of them don't shy away from being just a little bit strange, just a little bit skewed. I keep meaning to bring onto uh, one of these videos, I'm pretty sure it's um, Atomica. I think it's Atomica, which is really quite unsettling and strange and odd and 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 bizarre in some ways and it, and it's just fantastic that, that 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 it's part of the brand you know that it's been released um shan says oh boy your description is not what i imagined at all just by reading the notes so fascinating the name zazen is misleading then i suppose why does zazen is zazen a yoga reference because I, I i if it is I, I don't get it um and at the moment what i'm getting is some kind of cross between 
some sort of meeting point between the cucumbers and nail polish remover and plastic. Zazen is a Zen Buddhist term, says Dev. Aha, I did not know this. Okay. So maybe it's meant to be a kind of Buddhist Zen-like state, um, but in a very, very kind of urban, <coughs> ultra-modern setting. It is... It's very, very, very curiously green. Um, yeah, strange. I was not expecting that. That would be very, very interesting to see how that develops. Let's see what I can tell you about it. Um, so, introducing the fragrance of presence, says the brand. Um, what can I tell you? Still and silent, as if de defined by mindfulness, Zazen is a fragrance of tranquility. Okay, a welcome pilgrimage toward calm and contentment. Effusing softly like the gentle sound of bamboo flutes, Zazen's accords meld seamlessly, quieting the mind and positing a moment of profound clarity. Okay, so I'm clearly, at least at the start of it, reading this very, very, very differently. But I'm, I'm, it, it's very compelling in its strangeness. From its heady top of saffron, Okay, maybe I'm just having a complete inability to smell day. The dryness, I suppose, but but I didn't think, I, I well, you know, I didn't think saffron, as you can see. So from its heady top of saffron, Zazen imbues an earthy warmth as it mingles with subtle tartness <coughs> of mandarin and apple. Okay, so if it's green apple, maybe not a million miles away from cucumber. The scent's heart is a silent explosion of rice. Okay, the steamed quality. Green violet. Green violet. Do they mean like violet leaf then? or And orange blossom, which immediately captures the wearer, delivering a sense of stillness and serenity. At its base, musk, tonka and amber conjures a seductive skin-like smoothness. Hmm. JJ says the apple accord. That could be the nail polish remover culprit. You're not wrong, actually. You may well be right. Uh, and what are folks saying about this one? JJ says, I kind of want to smell this nail polish remover impression, oddly enough. Some heavy acetate, I suppose. Again, you could be right. Aileen on, online, sorry, Aileen on Beauty says, by Killian has a cucumbery perfume that has some similar notes. I wonder how it compares to Zazen. Aha. Uh, Maudlin says, I like Synthetic Jungle, so who knows, maybe I would really like this. Oh, but Synthetic Jungle is more grass, scalbinum -y sort of green. Um, but curious, curious because also I think quite unashamedly synthetic, uh, which for something, you know, named after Buddhist Zen-like tranquility is interesting, but please don't get me wrong. I'm not writing it off at all because this, this, and we need to see how it develops and I need to try it on skin because this is actually strange st st stroke interesting rather than off-putting. I keep kind of want to try to work it out. Uh, we should move on to Cravache then, because this is this is a new EDP, a sort of modern reinterpretation of uh, a, a, a Piguet classic from the 60s, I believe. Uh, well, you've all told me what Zazen means, so perhaps you can enlighten me as to what Cravache is supposed to mean. Now, in the in the sort of modern incarnation of the brand, of the Piguet brand, there was a Cravache EDT. And I rummaged through my catalogue, my, my collection, and sure enough, I have an old-ish, I mean, you know, it's not vintage because it was one of the modern Piguets, but I suppose this bottle must now be about, I don't know, 10, 10 or 11 years old, so we can do a comparison. Uh, that was an EDT. This is a new EDP. Oh, We Are Sentient says a riding crop. Aha, so is it slightly onomatopoeic? Is it meant to be like kach, kravash, or something, I suppose? Um, so let us let us unseal this and see what they have done for us. Again, I don't know who the perfumer is behind this one. I know that it's Aurélien Guichard, who's redone a lot of the current Piguets, but I don't think he's exclusively done all of them. Um, all right, let's pop that there. Quick shot of the bottle for those of you who want to see what it is. it's a standard PGA bottle. Let's get another blotter. 
Okay. So this is the new EDP of Kravash from Piguet. Okay, so now this is, you know, the weirdness is gone, the strangeness is gone, that kind of skewed quality is gone. This feels this feels like a very, 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 very effortlessly charming, unassuming citrus, but with something substantial happening in the base. So a citrus supported by strong woods, strong mosses, and, and I guess that's what makes it different from, you know, just a cologne. Um, now, clearly, I have smelt it before, because I have got this in my collection, and I've had it for a while in my collection, but I cannot for the life of me remember it. So if it smells anything like this, then my mind has gone blank, and I can't remember it. I'm pretty sure that I didn't include Cravache in my book. I remember getting a whole load of these Piguet samples when I was writing my book, and I think I included, I think I included Calypso and maybe one or two of the classics, but perhaps Fracas and Bondi both. I can't, but but Cravache for some reason didn't make it. Um, but this is this is just very very attractively suavely sophisticated, and it's making me think not because they smell similar, but because they're creating a similar sort of effect. It's making me think of Amouage. Honor Man, you remember the, the men's version of Honor, which I personally think is one of the most suave uh, perfumes I've ever smelled, um, but the kind of perfume that I kind of aspire to grow up to being able to wear. It, it's, it's just such an Atticus Finch of a scent, uh, Honor Man. Um, and this is reminding me of that, although it's not, it, 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 it's, it's, this is not as weighty and full-bodied as on a man it does it does sort of veer towards citrus codes as well so while this is developing a little bit let us label it i will just very quickly read the press info not that there is a huge amount of it and then we'll also have a spray of the old edt um right what can i tell you about this one uh Cravash coming out imminently. Classic Cravash has been reimagined for today's astute fragrance aficionado, taking this traditional aromatic blend and adding a modern addictive twist to its universal appeal. Interesting. Uh, opening with bitter orange and green bergamot that intertwines with green mandarin and petit grain. That you can definitely smell the petit grain. The new formula immediately brings the wearer to the edge. Okay, maybe not the best sentence construction. The, the, to the edge of what? Please do enlighten us. Sweet jasmine and aromatic sage are then balanced to equilibrium with saffron and rich oris, nodding to this sense heart-whipping effect. The ultimate secret weapon, a yearning crystallized lavender, is grounded by sensual leather, luscious vetiver, and deep patchouli for an unforgettable finish. And I think actually I probably mostly go along with all of those, apart from being taken to the edge. Um, there is the kind of dryness, um, dryness of, of of the iris, and maybe that kind of hay-like, slightly tobacco-like quality of um, the lavender. But it's. It's just very, it's, it's, it's smart. It's, it's very smart. It's very, very well turned out. I'm really curious to remind myself of the EDT now. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so this is circa, what, circa 2011, 2012, Piguet Cravache EDT. There you go, a smaller bottle, that one. Let's get another blotter. Oh, let's put that one back. But what's interesting about the EDP so far is that I wonder if there's a kind of gap in the middle. It, it feels like it's top and base 
and maybe not enough of a bridge in the in the middle but um time will tell let's see okay oh guys quite different actually quite different so this the edt now um smells much more of the past and feels like much more of a whole. Now, it, it's interesting that I just felt that I said, didn't I, that it feels like the new EDP is top and base and a bit of a gap in the middle. Whereas the EDT, the EDT isn't as sparkling and maybe isn't as spread out. So you, ca you can't sort of pick out um, the individual notes in quite the same way. It is basically a citrusy aromatic with a sort of patchouli woody base. But it's maybe a little bit rougher, harsher, and, and who knows why that could be. It may be that because at this point in the brand's history, what they were trying to do is recreate um, some of the older ones and that was becoming harder and harder and harder and maybe that's why in the end they decided that they had to stop and so they've gone back and I've just labeled this blotter EDP when it's actually the EDT and then they had to then that's when they thought okay let's completely go back to the drawing board and start from scratch um, so this is this is maybe it's curious because I'm going to say it's more old school but less suave because it maybe it was like the the best that the early part of the 21st century could do to create old school which wasn't great because it 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 had become very very hard at that point to 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 do old school fougere type sense really convincingly um see how those blotters do but it's certainly the edp Feels very, very wearable, very, very easily uh, wearable. JJ says, and I feel quite satisfied that I have the EDT version. Oh, yes, I'm definitely hanging on to mine. And SMC says, sorry for the off topic, uh, but curious if anyone has tried the new Hermès Jardin. That's coming soon. That is coming soon. Well, you fear not. Um, but yes, if you, if you are able to go and smell it before we do a video of it here, I think it might be worth smelling first. Um, okay, and so that brings us to the last two here. Now, you know what these two are, okay? They are kind of um, uh, modern classics, really. So they're, they're not new releases by, by any stretch of the imagination. They are Clinique Happy and Clinique Happy for Men. The original Clinique Happy is from uh, 1997, I believe. Let me just check to make sure that I'm right in saying that. Yeah, 1997, composed by Rodrigo Flores Roux and Jean-Claude Delville. I think uh, the, the, the perfumers have won several awards, actually, for the creation of Happy. And then a couple of years later, we got Clinique Happy for Men. I don't know who made those, but why are we talking about them now? Well, we're talking about them because this is a new limited edition bottle of Clinique Happy for Women, <clears throat> which has been created in association with the actress, uh, Amelia Clark, whose work I am not um, overly familiar with because I gather that she is really, really big on TV, unless I'm mistaken. And I, I don't really tend to watch a huge amount of TV. I'm more of a, a films and books kind of guy. And I can't get into this, which will mean make for a very, very interesting video. Oh, no, now I can see what I need to do. And this has been created uh, to raise funds for a charity. She was on Game of Thrones, says Shan. Yes, I'm, I, I, yeah, I, I think. I, and, and hasn't she also done, or, you know, forgive me if I'm getting wrong, but hasn't she also done some ads for Dolce & Gabbana, I seem to remember? Uh, we'll talk about, or I'll tell you a little bit about her charity in a moment. Um, but you can see that it is a different bottle from the standard one. It's got, supposedly, this is her motto in life, you are enough. And then a sort of stylized version of her signature there. Can you see that? Um, but, uh, oh, Christine says, D you didn't see Solo, a Star Wars story. Actually, I did. Was she in that? God, that's really bad that I've completely forgotten that she was in. Well, then, yes, I have seen her. But, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Um, 
Now, happy, happy is an interesting one. Let's go back to the nineties. Let's go back to the late nineties. Um, because happy is one of these ones where you think, yes, did it really? You know, is it really all that happy, or is it actually more contented, or um, I don't know, at peace or satisfied <laughs> but of course those names would never have worked as well as happy right um oh gosh it's i haven't smelt this for ages this is so 90s now somehow isn't it those kind of you know again in inverted commas exotic fruit type notes like the you know like the papayas and the guavas and the mangoes and then a huge load of musks in the base um, something that nowadays I suppose we read as being fairly shampoo-like uh, accord. SMC says, Satisfied would be a great perfume name. Do you reckon? <laughs> what are you wearing? Satisfied by Calvin Klein. Satisfaction, maybe. Oh, I, I don't know. No, anyway, let's not go there. Um, happy. I know. The, the, and I wonder if even happiness as a concept we've, we've sort of moved you know like one of one of the things that everybody always wanted to be was happy you know one of your main goals in life was always to be happy and 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 i'm not saying that obviously people's goal in life nowadays is not to be happy but as a kind of stand by watch word it, it it seems to have had its day i mean people are now i suppose talking a lot more about wanting to be fulfilled what are some of what are some of the other buzzwords kind you know people want to express and feel kindness kindness is, is huge as well isn't it um what are some of the official notes in it grapefruit mandarin bergamot jasmine orchid um mimosa lily hawaiian wedding flower whatever that means is there only one type of hawaiian wedding flower yes there are all these kind of vaguely white floral, vaguely aquatic, um, shampoo-like musks going on here. I mean, it's, 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 it's certainly not unhappy, is it? But it's also not um, life of the party happy somehow. Oh, and I'm, and I'm just ignoring your comments now. So, while this is going on, and we, and then I thought we may as well have a smell of um, happy for men. Let me just tell you a little bit about uh, the, the charity that this is raiding funds for. So, as I say, it's Amelia Clark's, um, and Amelia Clark is a Clinique Global Ambassador. Amelia Clark's charity um, called Same You, all one word. I think it's sameyou.org as in the same you. Um, Clinique's global ambassador, Amelia Clark, founded the Same You charity for brain injury recovery survivors in 2019, after surviving two life-threatening brain hemorrhages and a stroke in her 20s. So the charity sounds as though it's doing some very, very good and important work. The charity's aim is to create the missing emotional and mental health recovery services essential for brain injury and stroke survivors. And so happy, I suppose, it's a, is, a, is a perfect perfume to go with it. And a, a, the, according to the Clinique website, every purchase that you, that anybody makes of this limited edition bottle uh, will include a 30% donation to the Same You charity. A little bit more about it. Uh, what else can I tell you about the charity? This is just from their website. Uh, it says here, Amelia Clark survived two life-threatening brain hemorrhages while working on Game of Thrones. The response to Amelia sharing her story and starting Stay Mew has been overwhelming, showing us the huge unmet need worldwide. After a brain trauma, there simply isn't enough being done to support survivors leaving hospital. Back home is where the hard work, frustration, fear, and challenges really begin. Stay Mew's purpose is for brain injury survivors to feel they haven't lost the person they were before. And then it goes on, and it actually says that it's estimated that nearly one in three people will have an acquired brain injury, or ABI, at some point in their life. Reports say that more than 135 million people worldwide are living with brain injury. This is an underestimate of the scale of the problem due to the lack of focus on brain injury. The World Health Organization 
identifies rehabilitation as a substantial and ever-increasing unmet global need, but it's not an integrated part of health services. Neuro-rehabilitation is among the most neglected and underfunded areas. The Stroke Association reports that 45% of stroke survivors feel abandoned once they leave hospital, or felt abandoned once they'd left hospital. Um, so... I would, you know, I, th I think we can all agree, very, very, very good work, very, very worthy work. Uh, Christine says, I wonder how many young people buy happy thinking it's connected to Pharrell Williams. Really? Do you think people do? I, I mean, I'm obviously, I know that I love that. I'm one of the few people who loves the song, but I never thought of the connection. Uh, Tamara says, Clinique is not a brand I would choose. Not sure it's the best platform for the cause. Well... Estee Lauder and Clinique is an Estee Lauder brand have a long, long history of doing tons and tons of very highly regarded campaign work. I mean, their their, their breast ca cancer campaign that's been around for a long time is is very, very well established, very highly respected. So, I don't know. I I I, I, I guess you know we we can agree to disagree. Uh, Wattleby Project says, "Wow, I didn't know that about her. What a what great work! I want to buy some." No, actually, I didn't know that about her either. Yura says, I had a lecturer who had a terrible accident and had to live with a severe brain injury, horrible, but she was very strong and came back. Quite an inspiring lady. So there you go. Um, and I think on that note, we can just turn to our last one. This, this is just an excuse. Doing Clinique Happy for Men is just because we were doing the original Happy. So from 1999, but this is a current bottle, okay? This was sent by Clinique just the other day. And I don't know who made this, actually. I have a feeling this one is, you know, sort of marginally less interesting than, than, than the women's one. Uh, okay. Let's pop that on there. Happy for men. Probably the last perfume that I should wear because I'm, I'm not known for being a cheerful soul. <laughs> Eeyore was always one of my favourite characters growing up, and you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. Okay, where can we pop this so that we've got room for all of them? Let's pop that on here. Actually, let's move that so that so the pigays can still be seen. Okay, happy for men. <clears throat> right. See, at least the, the interesting thing about this, so we're talking 1997 and then 1999 for the men's version, this is going back to the time when brands actually tried to come up with some sort of thematic unity or some sort of connection if the scents were being released in pairs. Gone are those days, sadly. But if this if this is meant to be a male masculine version of the original Happy, then it, then it is, because it has a very, very similar structure. Um, it's got those kind of shampoo-like masks the, the the fruity notes, <clears throat> and yet I suppose the thing that is pushing it towards more stereotypically masculine directions is a woodiness, maybe a cedary quality. I mean, what's interesting about it is that it isn't it isn't immediately um, and obviously masculine. Um, which is kind of interesting because I suppose if you put it in the context of the late 90s, you know, you were still heavily under the influence of CK1, of Escape for Men, of L'Odyssée pour Homme, of things like CK Crave. And then somewhere at this point, Dior Hire came along. And the, it was this phase when masculine scents, I guess, were for want of a better word, I mean, this is a loaded word, but masculine sense where I guess a little bit less butch, a little bit less aggressive. And then of course, non, long, not long after that, we got the properly sort of metrosexual sense like Dior Homme, which started bringing in this sort of flirting with the idea of gender fluidity. So it's very much of its time um, and also very much a counterpart to the feminine version. And even though it's not the kind of thing that I personally would wear because I suppose it's just a little bit too light, a little bit too sweet fruity for my tastes. Um, I would definitely prefer to wear this over some kind of uber modern masculine, which is just full of 
velcro ambery spiky horrible woods you know the your, your versace eros and those sorts of things at least this is inoffensive and sort of super clean what are they saying as their official notes again jasmine freesia rose a mandarin green lemon uh and then cedarwood and guyac wood and cypress in the base um why are we congratulating people? Mark Tube says, my daughter was born earlier today. Oh my goodness, congratulations to you. And now alive from Mr. Persilay's, I feel blessed. Yeah, I think maybe you need to feel a little, little bit more blessed with the first bit of news. What are you doing watching alive? Why are you not with your, with your daughter? Sending you lots and lots of good wishes. And um, have, have you chosen a name? Have you got a name? Oh, congratulations to you and and and, and your whole family. Don't forget Viking, Mr. Persele says, Ashfaq. Yes, those sorts of things. I would so much rather um, wear this than any of those. Andre says, I have a formula for this one. It was certainly quite unique at the time of release. Interesting, interesting. Uh, we Are Sentient says, she must be called happy. Um, hmm. Maybe not, although I don't know. Maybe you are going to call her happy. Tamara says, today's fragrances do seem heavily wooded, especially with the oud trend. Yes, and ambery woods. Um, but this is... It, it just, it just <laughs> you know, cleanliness and adolescence are maybe not necessarily concepts that always go together. Um, but, but somehow... They do come together <laughs> well in this one. Polpo says, don't call her cravache. No, don't. <laughs> right. I think that brings this episode to a close. I can't be that. I can't top the news of a, of a, of a new um, uh, arrival in the world. Actually, in my family, we're expecting a new arrival. Not my direct family, not me, but one step removed, we're expecting a new arrival before the end of the week. So... Uh, wellness is a buzzword these days, says Rachel. Yes, you're right, actually. Yes, yes, yes. How could I have forgotten that? Let's let's have a sniff of the ones that we started with. So we started with um, the Armani Privé, the Santal Dan Shah. Okay, I'm thinking back to what Chang said earlier. It's definitely gone quieter, but it's still doing that kind of smoky slightly angry Santal, Santal 33 thing. Oh my, are you going to be a grandpa, Mr. P? I already am. No, this is, this is going to be, this is, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a grandpa three times over, believe it or not. Actually, I don't see why you wouldn't believe it. Uh, then we went on to Zazen, which is just, okay, it's calming down and I can see that it's being a bit more Zen. But I'm just, I'm just so struck by how strange it is. I'm really, really liking its strangeness. I'm trying to think of something else it reminds me of. And at the moment, all that's coming to my mind is the Hermès Jardin Après la Mousson from Jean-Claude Elena. Do you remember how that had sort of interesting, gingery, green, tomato, fenugreek type thing going on? It feels very much like a scent in that in that vein. Then the new Cravash EDP, which is just it it's it's really, really pleasant, really well done. Probably the kind of thing that you could very confidently give as a gift because it would be really inoffensive. And I would imagine if they marketed well, it could do very well for the summer. Let's just go back to the EDT. Yeah, the, the, the EGT is 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 quieter and 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 less spread out. Um and Natalia says, no way, you must be the same kind of vampiric type as Keanu. No, I I just have a I just have an interesting family structure, shall we say. And then happy, which is just so ridiculously 90s when I smell it now. Isn't it funny how you forget how we all smelt? And happy for men. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of the same and maybe less sweet, fruity and more woody. OK, right. Thank you very much for sticking around. If you've made it through to the end, please, 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 please give the video a thumbs up. Um, if you have enjoyed it, if you haven't enjoyed it, then I 
I suppose you you can give it the thumbs down as well. But anything like that, all of the likes count uh, and are very very helpful. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for all the comments. Even if you're not watching the live, please feel free to leave a comment or ask a question. And stay tuned to social media for details of new episodes uh, coming your way soon. As I said, uh, hopefully very, very soon, new release from Hermès, new release from Diptyque. And uh, on the, what is it, on the 10th of March, on the morning of the 10th of March, a very, very special interview episode. But until then, take care, be good, and I will see you very soon. Bye now.